Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, we're going to be drawing the animals in the natural habitat of rivers and ponds. I am so excited to do this project with you because we're going to be doing a new technique. Now, we've used watercolor before, but today we're going to be doing something called a bleaching technique. Now, don't worry. We're not going to be using bleach. It's not good for our skin. We are instead going to be using rubbing alcohol. Now, don't worry. If you don't have rubbing alcohol, I bet you probably have some of this somewhere in your house because in the year 2021, we all have hand sanitizer. It's in your classroom. It's probably even in your car. I bet you even have some on your backpack. So we're going to use some hand sanitizer and some watercolors. And we're going to do a really cool technique called bleaching. I can't wait to teach you this project. It's going to be so much fun. Well, let's get ready to do our cute picture of our pond pals. So for today's lesson, you are going to need some watercolor paper. You're going to need a pencil, an eraser, and a Sharpie marker for drawing. You're also going to need a light colored crayon. We're gonna be using that part for the resist. So any kind of light crayon, white, yellow, peach, anything that's light. You're going to need a set of watercolors and a paintbrush and a bowl of water. I would recommend some type of paper to cover um, the table. And then our secret ingredient is going to be either hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol. If you're gonna be using rubbing alcohol, you're going to want to take and pour the rubbing alcohol into the cap. You're just gonna need a little bit. If you are going to be using hand sanitizer, you're just gonna need a little bowl to put it in. And then our last thing that you're going to need are a couple Q-tips. Now, if you don't have Q-tips, don't worry. You can just use your paintbrush. It'll work just as well. So I want you to pause the video, gather these items up, and then meet me back here when you are ready to begin. Welcome back. Now, first thing we're going to do is find the center of our paper like we do every week. I'm going to put a dot in the center. This is going to help me with my placement of my first animal, which is going to be my turtle. So around this dot, I'm going to form a rainbow, and that rainbow is going to be the shell of our turtle. Now, once I've formed that rainbow, the underside of the shell is going to be slightly curved. So I'm just going to come across and kind of make a loose smile shape. And then I'm going to add a second one of these just either above or below. It doesn't matter where you put it. This is the rim of the turtle shell. We're gonna round it on both ends. So I'm gonna do a forward and a backward C, one on each side. Then I can go in and erase any lines that I don't wanna keep. and I don't need that dot anymore. So once I've created the shell on the turtle, now I'm gonna begin by forming his head. So his head is gonna be looping up and around, looking up at the top where his little frog friend's gonna be sitting. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start from the side here and I'm just going to add the letter C. This is gonna be his head. You wanna make it big. And then from here, that is gonna go over around and then back under. His neck is curving out from underneath the shell and around and back. I'm gonna add a little extra curve right here because his head is now, his neck is tucked over his shell. I'm gonna erase the shell out of his head. Now I'm going to form his eye. So I'm going to come right up here to kind of the center and form a rounded cheek. And then a large rainbow shape for his eye. A big half circle for his pupil. And a smaller circle inside for his highlight. And then I like to add a little pencil into the pupil, just to remind me that that's the part I'm coloring in later. And then I can come right around, and give him a little smile. Now I'm gonna come to the front and give him his little leg, his front leg. So it's two lines side by side. I'm making mine about a finger and a half wide. It just depends on how large you made your shell. 
And then I'm gonna do his back leg coming out of the back side here. Should be the same width. And then I'm just gonna add three simple pointed toes. I kind of form the letter M at the bottom. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I start with one pointed toe, second one in the middle, and a third one on the end. Around the feet, I'm just gonna add some blades of grass. Just kind of make a scribble scrabble line. Make a little bit underneath him. And now we're gonna come up and create his shell. So for his shell, I'm just gonna come down from the top, I'm gonna to find the center here, and I'm going to form two lines that come kind of toward one another, kind of like you're getting ready to make the letter W. And then I'm going to close it off. And then I'm gonna skip a small space and do it again over here. So two lines coming toward one another and then close it off. I'm gonna repeat it, skipping a space until I get to the bottom. I'm gonna do another one over here. Always make sure you skip that space in between, two lines coming toward one another, close it off at the bottom. So once I've done the top part of the shell, then you've got the space in here. And here you can just make any kind of random shape you want. So uh, you just wanna make sure that there's a little section in between. And that it's kind of almost like a road, if you think about a road. So here, the shapes don't have to match. They can be any kind of random shape you would like it to be. And then you're just leaving a little space so you think about it being like a street or a road, that'll kind of help you when you're creating this part. So once you do that, I'm gonna go in and round my corners. I just don't want his corners to look really sharp. So I'm just gonna round the corners on all of those shapes. And then each one of these shapes on a turtle shell, it kind of sticks up a little higher then the section in between. So I'm just gonna slightly round them on each one. So they stick up a little higher. And then this part here will be a little lower. And then the final section is right in here. And all I'm going to do is just go in and make some parentheses. I already have the first one done here. So I'm just gonna go here and make one. Just skip a small space. Skip a small space. So I'm just making like a set of parentheses. And our shell is done. So somewhere up here is where you're gonna create your little toad or frog that's sitting up on his back. And I'm gonna bring him not directly in the center. I'm gonna kind of bring him probably over in this area here. And I'm gonna start by making a large circle that's slightly overlapping. You don't wanna make the frog or toad too small only because we have to paint it. And so um, if you make it too small, especially when we go in with the Sharpie marker, um, it gets to be kind of muddy when we're painting. So it's a little easier to make it a little larger. And then I'm gonna first start with the back of the toad. So I'm gonna make a big letter C, that's gonna be his back. And then his front is going to curve around. I'm gonna add his eyes later. I'm just gonna curve it around and make a smile, similar to how I did the turtle. I give him a little bottom lip and a big chin. And then I'm gonna give him his big back leg. So his back leg is going to be a backward C. But right here on the back, I'm gonna give him his little back of his foot, his heel. And then I'm gonna bring the foot out I'm going to bring it out here. We're going to want to do three very long toes. Now I'm going to erase this section here. Now you can use the end of your pencil since that's a small area, or you can grab your magic rub. I'm going to curve this up a little bit more. And then I'm going to do his front arm. So I'm going to come right over here. And I'm going to draw a little backwards C, this is the front of his arm. And the back of his arm is gonna come out 
So I'm gonna erase this section right here. So I'm forming kind of like an L here and we're gonna do three long fingers. Now from here, we're gonna to come to the front. This is where we're gonna create his eyes. So first gonna give him a little bump for his nose. And I'm gonna draw one large oval. I'm gonna erase the head out of the oval. And I'm gonna draw the second oval right behind it. So I can only see a part of the second eye. And I'm gonna make a large pupil. I'm gonna draw my highlight circle up at the top and lightly color in the pupils with my pencil. Now, depending upon what style uh, toad or frog you wanna give, draw, you can also add some eyelids like this, if you want him to look a little bit more sleepy, or you can keep his eyes wide open. It's really up to you. You could add eyelashes if you want it to be a girl. And then the next part is going to be our dragonfly and the calla lilies or cattails. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna draw a curved line that kind of goes up and over. I'm gonna match it, it's gonna be wider at the base and then it's gonna slowly taper and get thinner. And this is going to be where my dragonfly is gonna be sitting, resting on this little blade of grass. So our dragonfly has a large head. And remember, we're gonna be drawing with a Sharpie marker. So this is where I always have to remind myself, look at how fat my Sharpie marker is. So if I draw this too small, it's gonna be really hard to go in with my marker. Now, if you've got an extra fine point marker, you can do a little bit uh, smaller head. But for me, I'm gonna make my head just a little larger so that I can get in with the tip of my pen. And then I'm gonna draw two very exaggerated large eyes for my dragonfly. And to keep things simple for now, I'm just gonna draw two dots for his eyes, or her eyes, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> and then I'm going to draw the upper part of the body, which is more of an oval shape. And then the abdomen of the dragonfly is long, and skinny. I'm gonna curve it kind of back like a banana. Of course, I make everything smiling. I'm gonna add some antennas. And the wings on a dragonfly, they have two sets of wings. They have the upper wings, which are slightly longer. And they look similar to an airplane propeller. And then the lower wings are just tucked underneath. And now I'm just gonna add a couple more blades of grass or plant, just to add a little more color to my picture. And then on this side, I'm gonna draw a cattail. So cattail has a similar leaf, but it's more straight, not so wavy. I'm gonna draw maybe one or two of those. And they're pointed at the tip and wider at the base. And then the cattail has a long stalk that's skinny. And the shape of the cattail is similar to a hot dog. So I'm just gonna draw a hot dog shape up here. And then the end of the, of the stem pokes right out of the top like this. <laughs> kind of looks like a corn dog. I'm gonna add a second one. From here, once you're done with all of your drawing with your pencil, now you're gonna go in and trace over everything with your Sharpie marker. So I'm gonna trace mine and then you go ahead and trace yours and then meet me back here when you are ready.
Okay, when you're all done tracing all of your picture, then you're going to put your Sharpie marker away. We're done with that. Oh, I forgot a little bit of grass underneath this shell. When you're done, then you're going to put your Sharpie marker away and you're going to get your magic rub out and you're going to erase all your pencil lines. So go ahead and erase your pencil lines and I'll erase mine. Okay, I have erased all of my pencil lines and now I'm going to go in with a light colored crayon. Now you can use white, yellow, peach, cream, a light tan, anything that you have to just draw a resist line in between these shells. So for uh, today, I'm going to be using a peach color and the white would work really well as well, but my white's not going to show up uh, on camera. So I'm going to use this color just so you can see it later when we paint over it. And I want to go in and put a nice waxing coating on that separation between each one of those spaces on the tortoise shell. And then up here in the dragon wing, if you have dragonfly wing, if you have a white crayon, you can go in and draw a pattern in the wings. Now I'm just gonna draw two straight lines, which I know you can't see, but I'm drawing two straight lines right down the middle of the wing. And then I'm just gonna draw two or three lines going the opposite direction and basically making a checkerboard, which won't show up until I paint over it later. I'm done coloring. I've done my white and my cream. Now I'm gonna get ready to paint. So I've got my watercolor set and I'm going to uh, make sure that I've added water into the watercolors that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using yellow, green, blue, purple, and some brown. So you're gonna to wanna to take your paintbrush and just shake a little bit of water over those colors. I have a napkin, I've got a Q-tip. You can also just use the paintbrush that came with your paint set. And then we're gonna be using our secret ingredient. So you can either use hand sanitizer or you could use rubbing alcohol. So for my rubbing alcohol, I poured some rubbing alcohol into the cap so I've got that here. And for my hand sanitizer, I just squirted some in a bowl. So I'm gonna demonstrate with both today. I've got my little water bowl right here in the corner, my paints, everything is ready. Okay, so first we're going to uh, clean my brush. I'm gonna go in with the lightest color, which is yellow. I'm gonna tickle my brush on top of the yellow paint. And I'm gonna come in and paint a quick coat of yellow on my turtle's face. Now, the reason I'm gonna be using yellow first is I want kind of a lemon lime color for the turtle. And then I'm going to be making the grass a different shade of green. So just a little bit of yellow. You don't have to color the entire uh, legs and head. You just need a little bit and that, that will mix in nicely with the green later. Okay, I'm gonna rinse out my brush and then I'm going to move over to the green. So I'm gonna tickle my brush into the green paint water, and then I'm gonna add some green over the yellow. Now for the bleaching technique that we're doing today, once I have my one section done, I wanna go in quickly and do the bleaching technique. So I'm gonna do one section at a time so you can see how this works. So I don't wanna paint my entire painting, but I can paint the face and the legs quickly. As long as they stay wet, I get a really strong uh, bleaching effect. So now I'm gonna do the legs. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush. And place that down and you can use either your Q-tip 
or you can use your paintbrush, depending upon what you have. So I'm gonna go in and demonstrate with the um, hand sanitizer first. So I'm just gonna dip my Q-tip in the hand sanitizer. Uh, if you don't have a Q-tip, just use the end of your paintbrush or the hairy side of your paintbrush, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna tap my Q-tip with the hand sanitizer on top of the paint. Isn't that neat? I'm gonna do the other foot. And it does this really amazing starburst effect. So I'm gonna flip my Q-tip over to the other side and this time I'm gonna do it in the rubbing alcohol. So this one is the rubbing alcohol. The same effect, it's just a little bigger and bolder because the rubbing alcohol is a little bit stronger. Hand sanitizer has rubbing alcohol in it, but it also has, you know, some emollients for your hands to keep your skin from drying out, where the rubbing alcohol is just pure rubbing alcohol. I just think this effect is so neat. And I was really excited when I experimented with the hand sanitizer because it worked also. Okay, so turtle's done. It's not fun. We can reuse our Q-tip later. I'm just gonna set it over here off to the side. And now I'm gonna work on my toad. So for my toad, I'm not gonna start with yellow first. I'm just gonna go straight in with green. And um, I'm working with dry paper instead of wet paper because that way I can control my line a little better. And my toad is going to have a little bit of brown in it. So we have a pet toad. His name is Blinker. If you have not done my toad lesson yet, you should look that up in my YouTube library because uh, you can learn all about Blinker, our toad. He's quite old. I'm not going to give away how old he is. You're going to have to do that video to uh, find out how old our amazing toad is. And I'm going to take my Q-tip and do the same thing. I'm going to dip it in my hand sanitizer and go right in over those brown dots. And they are going to bleach out and make kind of a ring of different colors. Oh, I just think this method is so fun. Now my toad is done. I'm gonna put my Q-tip off to the side and now I'm gonna move on to the tortoise shell. Now this time I'm gonna do it a little different because this area is so large, I'm just gonna add some water first. If you have a larger paintbrush, you could do that with your larger paintbrush. And I'm gonna spread that water around. And when I get close to the green area, either the face or the frog's green, it's going to spread into my tortoise shell. And that is absolutely fine because my tortoise shell is gonna be both brown and green. I've got a little bit of water. Now I'm gonna go in with my brown paint. I'm gonna spread that all over my tortoise shell. And it's really dark when you first lay it down, but you can just spread it across your whole shell and you can see the crayon is resisting the paint. So it's just kind of leaving a neat dappled effect. And then you want to do another color. You don't wanna just leave it brown. So you could go in with orange, you could go in with yellow, or you could go in with some green. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush and pop in a little bit of green. All right, this time I'm gonna bleach, but I'm gonna do it a little bit different. So this time I'm gonna use my paintbrush instead of a Q-tip. So you really can see that this method you don't have to use Q-tips with. And here we go. Okay, so I've got my paintbrush, I'm cleaning it. And I'm gonna go in with my rubbing alcohol. 
And you get a more dramatic effect with the rubbing alcohol. And you can see it just literally pushes those colors out of the way. It bleaches that section. And rubbing alcohol can dry your skin out. So if you do get it on your skin, you don't have to run and go wash your hands right away, but you might wanna rinse them when we're all done with this project and then put a little lotion on your hands. Rubbing alcohol is also what is in hand sanitizer. So I'm gonna demonstrate with a hand sanitizer. I'm just using my brush and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna run my hand sanitizer across the shell. And you can see it does work also. You can also take the stick end of your paintbrush, this end right here, and dip it in the hand sanitizer if you wanna make smaller dots. This also works with the rubbing alcohol. Okay, so my turtle's done. Now I'm gonna move on to my dragonfly. So I'm gonna rinse all the rubbing alcohol and hand sanitizer out of my brush, and I'm gonna move over to doing the dragonfly. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of purple and brush this very carefully. So I always tap my brush on my napkin to get rid of that first big drip of color. And I'm gonna brush this over my wings. Now remember, I used a white crayon earlier and that white crayon now is resisting the dark purple paint. So you can see the pattern in the wing. And then I'm gonna go in with a, just a tiny bit of blue. I'm gonna tap it on my napkin because this is such a small area and I can go in and paint the body of my dragonfly. And since blue and purple are such a pretty combination, it's okay if my wing starts to leak down into my dragonfly. So I never wanna grab my color and then start to paint because this is gonna drip. So I just usually tap it on my napkin first to get rid of that big drip of color. And then I can control my paint a little more careful. You could also go over your dragonfly now if you wanted to do a little bleaching, you could do that as well. So I could go in with a little bit of hand sanitizer on the tip of my brush and I could tap a little pattern on the body. Our final part will be to paint the background for the cattail. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of yellow It's gonna make the cat tail a little bit more golden. I want it to look different than the shell. Then I'm gonna go in with a tiny bit of brown. And I can manipulate those two by just using a wet brush. I'm gonna rinse out my brush, tap it on my napkin. And now I'm just gonna go in and just tap that little section between the yellow and the brown. And just by tapping it, it kind of helps to break up that hard line. I just think that's really pretty. And we can finish with our stem our of our cattail. So you can make it green, you can make it brown. So to do the grass down below, I'm going to add just a little bit of water. This is going to help my color spread faster. I'm not putting a huge amount, just enough to moisten the paper. And I want my grass to look different than my turtle, so I'm going to begin with a little blue. So I'm going to go in, add a little blue across the bottom. And then I'm going to add my green next. So by adding a little bit of blue first, we're going to get a really pretty turquoise. That way my grass is slightly different than the turtle. And it helps the turtle's legs to show up. I want to keep my grass pretty simple too. 
meaning I don't want to spend a lot of time putting a lot of detail because it's the background. It's not the most important part of my picture. My turtle is. My turtle, my toad, and my dragonfly. I hope you had fun doing this project with me today. We learned a couple different techniques. We worked with doing a resist with our crayon. We learned our bleaching technique and we used some hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol. I hope you had fun. I would love to see your artwork. So if you could send me a picture to rtorres at lcusd.net, I would love it. If you send me a picture, I promise I will email you back. Have a great day.